Here's a quick video on the Febco 765 one inch vacuum breaker sprinkler assembly. Didn't have much experience with these, but my neighbor needed one replaced, so I bought one and figured I'd put it in for her. Just wanted to take off the old one and show you kind of some of the finer points of what we realized. Um, so I'm going to take off the 11 millimeter bolt at the top, which takes off this bell housing. And this is the main assembly that you typically hear breaking and spraying everywhere in the wintertime here in Texas. Um, I've already loosened this. The brand new one we had an issue with, um, with some debris in it, and uh, basically had to take some channel locks and just get it in here so that you could get pressure against two, two of these three and was able to loosen it. It physically says hand tighten on the rim here, engraved. So you really shouldn't have to do that, but the new one was kind of, uh, had to break loose just a little bit with the channel locks. This one I've loosened up as well with the channel locks, easy to do. And then you can unscrew it like this. <clears throat> just to kind of show you that it various parts that are associated with it. Counterclockwise, it's your typical standard threading. So you can see here there's this O-ring on the uh, outside of this <coughs> um, outer plastic screw housing. Um, and there's this one screw, or spring rather, uh, that you can see here that's uh, key to the operation, but let me continue showing you what else is in here. Once you've taken that off, you can take off the little whopper here, which basically has this more uh, seal rubber, rubber seal here that you can see. Actually, you can't see it there. Um, but that rubber seal on this piece that is just free floating. Now this comes up and down and actually hits against this metal plate here for the spring uh, when the pressure inside of this housing is up to you know your standard residential 50, 60 PSI. It will force this to raise up and hit this spring and um, seal water from coming out of the housing here uh, through the hole that you would see here. Underneath here is a little plate that's spring-loaded too. You can see I'm pushing down on it. Now this is just held in place with the spring, but you can actually turn it to that side and have it release. And this is just a plate free-floating kept in place by the spring. You can see some of the little uh, things that help it engage with the metal uh, in the main housing here. There's some lips under here that it engages with. And this exposes this spring here, which would typically come off by itself. Let me show you the spring. It goes like this, so the small diameters are facing upwards towards the bell housing. Um, to take that off, and that would have left what you could pull out this piece, which is the kind of main O-ring that gets down here to seal from the inlet. So that's the inlet on the bottom there that you see, and the outlet is there. This is clearly denoted as well on the housing, the flow direction. You can see the flow lines, at least there. Um, of which way the flow comes. So you have your city water supply or wherever coming up through here into the housing and then out that way. So that's basically the innards that you can take out, I believe, of all the uh, inside of this thing. Let me just show flashlight here, kind of anything else. Uh, essentially, you can see where the rubber ring has seated there. And again, that spring down here forces that down um, 
not this one, sorry, this one here, which is this piece, to sit down against that ring that I just showed you. So as far as the install, it's real easy. Um, I had to use the Schedule 80 here just to get a little bit more beef on the, uh, you know, connections, the main connections, two of those. Um, it's one inch pipe, which is typical for uh, your residential sprinklers. Um, so yeah, cutting it out, just using some couplers, um, you know, Schedule 40, one inch pipe was very easy to get it back together. I basically assembled the whole thing except for the couplers that would face down here and here. And the last connections I made was, you know, priming that with the purple primer and then the cement on both of those connections and then pushing the entire housing down onto the cutoff uh, stubs. A couple of key points I would recommend when you're doing this. It's a real easy job, but I did struggle a little bit on when it was finished. Um, a, I would, I had a valve downstream of this between the city line and this uh, connection here, where we turned off the valve and were able to cut this off and not have water go everywhere, obviously. Um, you obviously can cut, you know, you've got the inlet valve here, uh, that you can cut off and the outlet valve here that you can cut off as well. But we had the uh, the main line cut off so that when we cut this off, um, you know, there's no water going everywhere. The key thing there is before you do the final connection with the new device, flush your inlet, your outlet line uh, and open that main valve to flush out any kind of uh, uh, PVC particles that you would obviously get when you cut this with a hacksaw um, you know out of the main line because you physically can't do that while you're cutting it's going to get in there and you're going to get crap and what that'll do and actually did for me was it had a little piece here that was kind of stuck on this inlet which obviously uh, they warn very much about um, in the instructions to make sure you flush out the line so flush out the line that keeps any kind of stuff from getting stuck on any of these kind of check valves. Uh, once you do that, um, even if you do that, really, you, you might have stuff in here. So it might behoove you to take everything apart like I did since it's so easy and have it in this kind of state and then flush it. Um, you know, once you turn it on, you, you have everything secure so you could turn this valve perpendicular to the flow like that off obviously and then you would be able to turn it on and this is essentially just a, a bypass now there's nothing in here other than the housing and you'd be able to open this up and flush out uh, that entire chamber and anything in the line so that's ideally a, even the better way to do it in my opinion but definitely if you don't do that flush out the line before you make these final two connections uh, the other thing I saw was that as soon as I hooked it up, one of these uh, had was dripping. One of these uh, check valve. Uh, this is um, the one at the top, so this is on the outlet side, and this is more on the inlet side. Uh, these are just simple. <clears throat> Let me turn this around. Get a better view. So these are just simple uh, they don't come out but they're basically what I would describe I think is ball valves um, set set ball valves that you know in this direction it's open and in the perpendicular direction it's closed so that's closed that's closed and now they're open like that. So basically they were both closed on the new product, but it wasn't quite closed enough. And this top one was dripping, uh, a little bit initially. So don't be afraid of that. You just need to kind of tweak this valve a little bit by turning this set screw a, a little bit either way, and you'll get it to close. Um, 
The other thing I would say uh, for any of you people wanting to protect this from freeze um, is you would turn off, other than insulating this after it's installed, you would turn off these valves. I mean, what they recommend doing is, you know, turning off the valve and basically turning off the downstream valve of this that I mentioned was there. If you don't have access to that or don't know that, then you can at least close this valve. And that's when you would be able to open these screws by turning them parallel to the little check, check ports here. So getting them horizontal instead of vertical, that'll let this flush out. And then since uh, this one's closed, you would turn this one to 45 degrees. Gosh, that thing is like that, <clears throat> which would let kind of some pressure come off of here and, and back into here and, and flow out of here. Um, ideally, since this is so easy to do, just taking that off during the winter, if you're not using your sprinkler, having this closed off or the main valve closed off and just remove the innards here, uh, setting this bell housing on there like that uh, would essentially solve any kind of problems with these check valves that assemblies that always burst in Texas. I mean, they make thousands and thousands of dollars off these things. Breaking in the winter because no one knows how to do this, or if they do do it, they forget to do it. That literally is a five-minute process of taking those innards off, setting this bell housing on there for the winter time, and then leaving that valve shut off, this valve kind of 45 degrees, and eliminating any kind of issues, again, with both of these valves open so that water can drip out of there. So essentially, that's it. Uh, the only other thing, and this was a key thing, is when I did install it, um, I cranked open this slightly, uh, the main valve, to let the water start flowing. And what happens is you really have to get a certain amount of water pressure, back pressure, on this valve to get this spring, this loaded, because this sets like this. And you can see when it goes up, it hits the spring face, but that valve, I mean, that seal is not sealed yet. And when you open this partially, water comes up and there's not enough volumetric water flow through this housing to push this up all the way here against the spring. I mean, to make the spring actually push up, which actually seals the water. You have enough water flow to make this pop it go up, but it's not enough to seal it and push against the spring. So you basically, in this kind of situation, and when it's like that, water flows in this channel, this gap that's not there because the spring's not being compressed enough, and water starts just coming out of the top, and you're thinking, okay, something's screwed up. Something's broken, it's not working. That's not the case at all. You just need to continue with your hand kind of here covering this when the assembly's all done, allowing the water to kind of spray, because it will spray initially, but once you get this fully open, and the water flow is such that it's pushing against this, that initial flow that comes out of the top heavily, thinking that it's broken or something, will cease. So again, that's a key point, and I thought, oh, it's broken, I took it all apart, and I did find a little PVC piece here, which I thought, oh, okay, that was it. That was my issue, but it's not. Um, I mean, it definitely was an issue. I had some PVC there, but the main issue was I wasn't turning the valve on completely and allowing this spring to do its function and set up against this and shut off the water supply coming out of the top. So anyway, I hope this helped a lot. Um, a lot of good points in this video, I think, to help people with these uh, vacuum breakers. And an easy thing to prevent in the wintertime by doing some of these steps. Um, this part is $82 on Amazon, uh, maybe another 10, 
10 to $15 in PVC parts, a couple of 90s, uh, a 190 a coupling for the bottoms, a piece of a one inch pipe to, to make these to make these parts. Um, and these two, these are about four bucks each, so that's about eight bucks just for two uh, of the uh, threaded inserts uh, connectors. So yeah, about 15 bucks, 10, 15 bucks in parts. Um, and $82 for the main Fibco 765-1 uh, vacuum breaker. Anyway, have a great day. Hope this helped.